Hi everyone, welcome to Coffee Break with Your Soul. Today I'm back with the amazing John Astin. We recorded part one talking about this, the capital, the capital T this, and how indescribable it is really, and yet we continue to talk about it funnily enough, and how amazing it is to when we open ourselves to seeing our lives and everything, including this as one massive mystery that keeps us eyes, keep our eyes open and um, that invites us to look um, beyond our first impressions of anything, beyond first descriptions and so on. So I really hope that if you haven't watched it yet, you will watch it and that you enjoy it because it kind of sets uh, a tone, I suppose, for this conversation and any other conversations that we might have in the future. Hi, John. Hi, Maggie. Good to see you. Good to see you again. And so we were thinking that now that we established that this cannot be described and uh, how infinite and vast this subject is, we thought that we might actually now bring it down to our basically human experience and to talk actually about how living from this, how living, having this realization impacts our lives and how it help us navigate through often challenging situations because just because just because we know who we truly are just because we have these realizations it doesn't make us in any way immune to our human experience and all kinds all kinds of challenges so how do you feel about talking about this john that sounds perfect <laughs> <laughs> So honestly, it's quite it's quite difficult to uh, know even where to start because you know one of the things I can I can sort of speak of the implications in my own life, but in many ways I discover the implications every single day. It's something new every day that I notice that had the situation sort of happened before, had the challenge happened before, and so on. You know, I would. I know for the fact that the way I would deal with it, the, uh, the way I would feel about it, you know, would be very, very different. So, um, so I thought I, I'll start from from the thing that comes first to mind, which is really the biggest implication for me is, I think, the end of resistance to my actual human experience. Mm. Uh, the end of resistance to anything that is um, that is happening, and it's kind of difficult to for me still to talk about it because it also means for me in my personal journey the end of suffering, and and I want to qualify what what, what I mean by this because I know that this can be so confusing when we start operating with certain words. In a nutshell, it basically means that you know, so much of my suffering, when I sort of reflect on it back, came not so much from any experience, whether external or internal, so to speak, but from the resistance to it. You know, mm -hmm. this idea that this should not be happening to me, or mm -hmm. I want things different, or, you know, yeah, it, I mean, it would, it would show up in all sorts of, so in all sorts of ways. But it was that very, that very resistance, this idea that something should not be happening that would literally kick in this whole resistance mechanism that would show up in all sorts of ways. It could be, you know, trying to think positive. It could be, you know, there would be all kinds of ways that I would use to distract myself, to avoid what I was feeling mm -hmm. also. So mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of stuff that comes with that. So t tell me if you can resonate with that at all. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> no, absolutely. Um, and I think in my own experience that that tendency to, 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 to not resist in the way I once did experience experiences that, you know, are challenging, difficult, painful, confusing the whole the whole thing that can occur right as part of living a human life um has come about for me in <clears throat> in understanding very much what we were talking about last time which is that the way i'm typically defining a, a lot of those experiences 
is really what, <clears throat> from my vantage, what creates the sense that they are a threat, the sense that they are something to be avoided, something to be pushed away, something <clears throat> that means uh, something wrong or something broken about me or broken about life or and on and on and on and on it goes, all coming out of the way I hold it, the way I'm holding it, the way consciousness is holding it kind of conceptually. And so <clears throat> what's happened for me over the years of exploring all of this is that the more acquainted I find myself with that other perspective, that, that this is just wholly not what I imagine it to be, not the way I'm holding it. Um, I mean, it's very weird because for me, it's like simultaneous. It's like these two worlds happening so simultaneously. Yes. Like, it's not like I suddenly have no knowledge of what things are, you know, uh, that I can't name things and describe them and relate to them, you know, based on that mm -hmm. as I live my human life. But simultaneously, there is this other, like this other window into what it is. And <clears throat> what I have just continued to find is that when I bump up against either little sort of things, if you will, like um, I can share a story maybe about like, I felt like I was getting sick and this fever was happening and, and I could see it from that perspective and feel like even the fear arising of like, oh shit, I can't get sick. Or what if this is COVID? I've got all this stuff I have to get done. This whole narrative that just unfolded from that, the worry about it, um, the discomfort of it, all of it, all of that was there. And then simultaneously, there was just, for me, this is the way it often operates just in my mm -hmm. life. It's this mm -hmm. kind of curiosity that just arises mm -hmm. of like, well, what, what, what's actually there? Like, what, what is this? Yeah. From one perspective, like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to get sick. That's all there. That's just being there. And then there's just curiosity of like, well, what is this whole thing that I've just, in a sense, described into existence? And I remember lying in bed, you know, just last week, actually. And feeling that and feeling like how is like the, what I was describing as a potential problem, a discomfort that was there mm -hmm. on the one hand, at the same time was this open-ended, inconceivable, like light show is the only way I could say it. It's like some I don't know what to call it. I mean, I could call it life moving. I could call it existence moving. I could call it the mystery moving. There's no words for it as, as we know. But my experience of what it's like to encounter it in that way is so, so different. It's like, it feels like I'm touching the aspect of the event, of the occurrence, of the moment that's completely free of problem, that's completely free of definition, that's completely free of any um, threat, of any uh, worry, of even if the experience of worry is still there, this other perspective, which is an experiential perspective, is one of like, I don't know, one way I would put it is it's all is well, like all is profoundly well, mm -hmm. even when the fucking shit is hitting the van, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yes, which, yes. It, which can seem, you know, strange, you know, in a way, because it's like, well, which one is it? Is right. Are things falling apart? Are things collapsing? Are things, um, are there issues at hand? Mm -hmm. Or is all all is well and and there's no problem whatsoever and this is just pure inconceivable radiance shining. It's like both right. of them, you know, right. both of them. I think I, I said that I would qualify it and then I didn't. But um, you know what? So for example, when I say about the end of suffering, mm. I know that sometimes it may sound like I'm talking about no painful emotions, no you know, no pain, no grief, no heartache, no nothing like that. And that's not what I mean at all. It's actually in many ways, and I think, and I think you found that as well, that in many ways, all these emotions, let's say heartache or pain or grief or whatever, is actually felt so fully, like never before. Like before it would be sort of, 
sort of on the surface because that resistance would always be there. Oh, mm. you know, like, I, oh no, I don't want to feel that pain. You know, I don't want to feel that heartache. Oh my God, it's coming, you know, it's coming again. You know, which which is like, we're so conditioned to, you know, react to our various so-called, you know, disturbing or, or painful emotions in that way. So, so mm. when I talk about lack of suffering, I don't mean lack of those sort of um mm -hmm. you know states or 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 emotions it's just that mm. there's just no when i say there's no suffering i mean there's no resist that to me what was creating suffering before is the resistance to those things mm. it's the very thing that you've just mentioned that i'm so glad that you did um which is not only resistance to what's happening but also all the narratives about it oh my god like that i mean that is just massive so so when the narratives about what's happening are sort of not there anymore or even if they're there but they're kind of like you sort of recognize them for what they are that they're not mm -hmm. solid that they're not true that's right. also different in 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 my experience and i can only ever hmm. speak from my experience you know there's not much of that going on it, you know the, the the sort of there's no hmm. resistance and there's not much um of that narrative i mean even if it's there i don't think i'm aware like <laughs> it's like really, really bizarre so i want to make it very very clear that Mm -hmm. In my own journey, the suffering came from either the resistance, the idea that something should not be happening, or yeah. another big one, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. that it means something about me. Yeah. Um, so when those things, since those things been gone, you know, I don't, there is no suffering, but it doesn't mean that I don't have, <laughs> that I don't experience some painful or, or, mm -hmm. or let's say challenging emotions. But what I've noticed also recently, and it's also thanks to the conversations that we've been having, is that in some sense, not only that there is no resistance, but there's almost like no separation between the actual emotion. Like there's no sense of actual self at some mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. it's, hard, it's so hard to describe because I say at some level, but actually it's just how I'm experiencing it that there is an emotion and it's almost like I'm that, I can't even say that I'm experiencing it fully because I'm sort of it. Yes. You know, there's not like a, a sense of self that is experiencing disturbing or painful emotion. It's just, I'm just, there's a sense of being one with the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. that, yeah. So tell me, tell me what, tell yeah, me. That, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can discover that, whatever our experience is pleasurable or terribly painful, like it's the experience is centerless. You know, there's nothing at the center of the experience, actually. There's yeah. just experience. And that that's, I mean, that's one element, I think, in my, my, in my life where the, I mean, just maybe just trying to explain it. I don't really know what the explanation is, but, but that sense of like, why are these challenging states of mind from this other vantage less threatening? Well, because we we have that sense that um, the one we imagine ourselves to be at the center of the experience is not what we imagine. Actually, it's not it's not the concrete, fixed, it's solid yes, entity yes, there. Yes, that yes. even though we can, I can still have, I still have the experience. I mean, this for me is just, I, I I can't get beyond the sense of the paradox of it all because I still very much have a sense in my, my life of things in a way happening to me, events occurring to me in my life as a human. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, it's like, I was thinking about this this morning, just in, in anticipation of talking, like, you know, this human here, this being John, like, I can walk outside, walk across the street and not see a car get hit by the car and be injured by the car or killed by the car. And all of that is, is I call that, that that's like the world, that's the narrative world, that's the described world. And it's real. It's real in my experience. Absolutely. It's absolutely real. But it's not the whole story. And there's this whole other story, which is turns out to be the one that's beyond all the stories and the narratives, which is 
the individual being like, I mean, what, what am I, what is this creature? Like, I have no idea. I am the vast mystery as is everything else. So the one walking outside, walking outside road, car, all of those things are, again, they're real, but they're also in a sense defined into existence by the way they're being held conceptually. And so then opens up this whole other, like I said, this whole other way of, of encountering the world of the human world, which is utterly beyond the human at the same time. It's like when you're talking about suffering, for me, I might put it slightly differently, although I think I'm saying, I, I'm, I think it's very similar to what you're describing, which is that there's still suffering or pain. I don't know what the difference is. I'm kind of maybe thinking of them synonymously now. But, but at the same time, there's something that's uh, not apart from that pain, but actually in the pain itself that is beyond the pain, that transcends the pain, that's yeah. not defined by that because this reality with a capital T, nothing can define it. Nothing can encapsulate it. And so it's very weird because... I mean, I've explored this with physical pain, where I remember having this very, I wrote about it in my last book, I had this very intense, I don't even know where it came from, pain in my wrist that was, I was on my fucking knees, I was just, it was so painful, and physically painful. And I was like, Oh, my God, this is just, it was terrible. <laughs> I was like, I hated it, you know, I didn't enjoy it at all. So, and the it felt like on one level, like, I'm experiencing pain. And I want to do something to mitigate this, to to heal this somehow, right? Yeah, so all of that's it, going. I call it common sense. Yeah, common sense. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like looking for answers, and then exactly, and and be, because I have this whatever curiosity, and I love to explore all of this in the ways that I do. It's like it feels like every moment is potentially this opportunity to kind of look yeah. at it and and see what it is. And so it's like, okay, this raging pain, I would describe as raging pain. What is that? And then I just like, I enter into the pain. I mean, I'm describing it and it's really not like this, but I'm trying to use words. It's like, I'm basically just, what is this? <laughs> what is this pain that's killing me right now? That feels like it's killing me. What is it? And then suddenly there's like, I'm in the unknown. I'm in, I'm like, I'm thrust into the mystery of what pain is, how open-ended it is, how inconceivable it is, how I can't even find what it is. So in one sense, I have excruciating pain. And at the same time, I don't, I can't even find pain as a thing. And that sounds bizarre maybe, but that's what I keep finding. It's like, this paradox that all of this stuff, the the the, the world, the form mm -hmm. that we all live as humans and encounter, and sometimes it's gritty and challenging and painful, yep. Yep. is at the same time not that. Yeah, you know, I don't have a fixation on it, but I sometimes. I can very easily see how this conversation is about this being just an illusion. You know, mm. in particular, if someone is really suffering, say from in particular like physical illness and or pay physical pain, and someone like that, like you know, I I find some you know if someone talks about it in these kind of circumstances, and it, I mean, there's just a whole other stuff. No, going you're on. When absolutely someone, right. When someone yeah. when someone yeah. doesn't when someone finds it okay to tell someone who's in the midst of suffering that this is all an illusion. So this is just mm -hmm. another kind of, you know, other separate topic, but, you know, it right. is, you know, in many ways it really is. And, and I think that what you're, what you're pointing to and what we're, what we're trying to, what we're trying to sort of talk about here is really that, multi-layered kind of experience and even then it's really tricky to talk about it because in the moment it's not multi-layered like for example in my experience 
you know whatever i'm experiencing is just experiencing i don't experience it in a multi what i would call a multi-layered thing it's sort of all collapsed you know mm. but then when say you and i talk i can absolutely in a descriptive mm. when we go into like this trying to describe it then yeah. all these layers come up and that's when you recognize that mm. it really is about this multi-layered experience multi-dimensional experience where you mm -hmm. know you you can you can have the physical pain and i've heard it so many times from people who explored the you know the this and also mm -hmm. suffered from like really really serious physical mm -hmm. uh you know issues mm -hmm. of which many include pain mm -hmm. and they would say literally that and again, this is, I'm not trying to say that this is how it is or should be for everybody. I'm just mm -hmm. saying about those people's particular experience that what I notice, what they always point to is that how much of suffering comes from the narrative about the pain, the narrative about the physical pain, the resistance to it. Yeah. But when we talk about, it, we don't talk about, okay, so now I'm not going to resist, try to not resist. And how bad of me that I failed not to resist the physical pain. Like we're not going into those assessments. It's just that mm -hmm. I think it's just a fascinating observ observation of uh, yet again, how mm -hmm. much of even things that feel so real, like physical pain, you know, how much of the suffering around this mm -hmm. um, comes from our resistance to it and from our narratives about it that we may or may not be even aware of and mm -hmm. then there's another layer to it where i've heard people describe that when they actually allowed themselves to go right into the pain right into the physical pain trying not to resist it mm -hmm. then literally they would end up experiencing pain and ecstasy at the same time like literally simultaneously i mean yeah. and, and so, no that's, that's 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 perfect that's <laughs> right? so true yeah, yeah. Right? It's, it's, I was just going to share a story about that, but, but no, go ahead. No, no, yeah. tell me, tell me the story. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was, you know, arguably one of the most difficult things I ever went through in this life uh, it was a loss of a relationship. And, and I was, you know, you, you talk about like that sense of almost like discovering that these experiences are not the threats we imagine them to be in my in my my life has almost like it's like there's almost more there is more freedom to just have the experiences because they don't need to be avoided because there's nothing there actually to avoid it's just experience and and in this particular situation i would say if i had to put it into some sort of box i would just call it grief that i was encountering Mm -hmm. It was like grief, like I'd never, ever encountered before. And I was just, from the outside, I, people in my life were concerned about me. Like, it looked like I was just absolutely falling apart. I was in so much um, a sense of like, it was just, I was beside myself, you know, with grief. It was just, it was wrenching, wrenching. And I remember like one friend in particular saying, oh, you need to stop this. It's just too much. You know, it's like, this is not good. Like, you know, it was like, it was something not okay about what I was experiencing. And I could feel in me like, like, yeah, this is just, I would never wish this on anyone. I mean, cause it was really difficult in the human way at the same time. This was this was the water of life flowing. This was this was the way life was moving. This was what was happening. This was the very and I could feel that simultaneously. Not always. There were times where I was just you could say it felt like I was in a sense gone in the description of it and the the drama of it and the narrative of it where I was just seemingly kind of lost in that. But in another way it's just very subtle. In another way yes, in another way like I don't know, for me, there's just kind of been this ever growing sense that uh, like that all is well somehow, that there isn't like this is the, like what do they call it in Tibetan, the great perfection of this somehow, not as a concept, but as some kind of knowing that this is not merely the way I'm describing it, that this is something 
amazing. And you said like, and about the kind of simultaneity of pain and ecstasy and, and the, the difficulty simultaneous with seeing the beauty of it somehow. And this is exactly what was happening to me during this experience where I literally had moments where I could not tell whether this was the worst thing that haven't ever happened to me or the most profoundly beautiful thing that ever happened. I mean, it was like, I could just feel the, it's very strange because it's like those two ways of encountering it in some sense are so different in their feel, in their, the sense of it in a way, so different. And yet, strangely enough, it's the same reality in a sense. It's like the same, um, it's like, it's like one thing, I'm putting my hand up here as the one thing, but it's like, what's it like from this way? And then what's it like from this way? But it's the same thing. So my pain is also, and the grief is simultaneously utterly beyond that. But the utterly beyond being the grief doesn't negate the grief. Like, do you know what I mean? Because it's, in fact, the utterly beyond grief, the transcendence of it all is showing up when showing up in those moments that I was experiencing as this intense grief and tears. And so it's just, this is like with a feeling of being so human and so right. I mean, so human at the same time, utterly beyond that simultaneously. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the issue with, with, well, issue. I mean, it depends really, but um you know, if, if someone is, and I keep on saying that so often, you know, that if someone is not comfortable with what is seemingly a contradiction or a paradox, mm. then, you know, when exploring this, it's going to be very difficult to reconcile the two because this idea that, mm. you know, we can be simultaneously in pain and also not, <laughs> you know, and also be utterly, you know, open to it and not resisting it, you know, for the mind, it just sounds crazy, you know, how, yeah. how is that, you know, how is that even possible? So it's something about this simul things just happening simultaneously and not like either or this or that. It really is the end of those kind of dichotomies in yeah. both the experience and, you know, in conversation and even things like, mm. Mm. you know, what, what to, to me, when we talk about, you know, illusion, this experience being an illusion, you know, I'm not particularly comfortable with that because one, because it's just in a, in one, like in one sense, yes. And in other, in terms of our, you know, perceptual experience, mm -hmm. it's very fucking real. And so like, if someone kicks you in totally. the ass, you're gonna, <laughs> you know, you're gonna, you're gonna feel that. Right. So to me, very much what we're talking about that this with couple to couple to T you know includes it all there's literally nothing that's being excluded mm -hmm. including when when we talk about no resistance or when i talk about no preferences in terms of mm -hmm. like what is it that i'm experiencing mm -hmm. that i don't have the preference over feeling this way or that way it doesn't mean that I have to like it like this also includes the freedom not to like what's happening it doesn't the no resistance or openness does not necessarily mean, you know, putting up with things, putting up with abuse, not setting boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually way more common sense mm -hmm. than, than, you know, than, than transcend, like, you know, because people will say, oh, it's like woo-woo stuff and everything and, you know, detached from reality. But actually, when you live from this, you you actually have way more common sense. You actually start to navigate through life, meet life, and navigate through life with much more grace and ease. You know, is it does it get messy every once in a while? Yeah, it does. You know, but there's no idea that that should not be there. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's what you know. You know, I found myself. You know recently going through some challenges and it's amazing how I could simultaneously be sort of see, feel myself in the throes of a particular challenge mm -hmm. and, and then burst out laughing in the middle of, of it. Like even through the tears of whatever might be coming forth as a, 
um, as a result of the challenge I'm experiencing. And then simultaneously, there's this sense of like the open-endedness of it, the lightness of it, the, the mystery of it, the aliveness of it. The um, I, I write, it sounds very contradictory and like a dichotomy, but it's actually not. That's what's so that's what's so extraordinary somehow that it's it's it, it two things that are not one thing like two very different sort of um you know i'm thinking about my my mom's passing right now and and it, it's it's something i wrote about um in my last book but but i'll just say kind of briefly that there was wow a really stark example of these two kind of perspectives and 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 in fact, it was something about the event itself that highlighted that for me in such a profound way that from the human side of the coin, if you will, what was going on, we were all, all the family was with her. Um, and God, it was just fucking heart wrenching. It was like she was having these long, like they call the death rattle, like these long, oh, slow God, breaths. Yes. And my mom was she was in a coma at this point, um, seemingly. And. Um, she was this remarkable woman and and it was just like the 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 human drama of it was just as thick as thick could be of like wow you know um, my dad losing his beloved of you know 60 years um or her kids losing their amazing mom her her granddaughters who, they adored her so that emotion was just oh my god it was just is as human as human could be and we're there, what, you know, it's happening. And I remember feeling all that narrative, the whole drama just there. I mean, it was no, it was no getting away from it, no desire to get away from it. I was living it. I was being it. I was feeling all of it. And then I just remember it just happened very spontaneously where I felt like, I don't know, it was like suddenly I was just like dunked into the core of it all somehow, like into the like the essential nature of the whole event. And I just felt like this profound sense of, I'll just call it radiance, like just the presence of the whole thing, just the isness of it, the beingness of the whole event. The drama's still there. It's all there. I'm still feeling it. You know, there's tears. Um, we're, we're just staring into the face of the mystery of death, of the passing of this beautiful being. But simultaneously was like, it was like it was light there was radiance it was like the whole thing the whole narrative it was just like it was like the difference between like the imagine that all that human stuff was like a dream and it was like it was like in that instant i was simultaneously dreaming this dream of my mom's passing not an illusion at all a very real dream <laughs> um and simultaneously seeing that Oh my God, this is the dream of life. This is life's dream. Like this is, this is the creative force of the universe right now that looks like the passing of a being. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Like this is everything. I felt like everything that I'd been exploring and discovering in my own life was coming to sort of like this point of like confirmation in a way. Like the, the sort of from a human standpoint, like the ultimate like thing we don't want to have happen is death you know we're trying to fend it off at all costs we have all sorts of ideas about like what a problem it is it's the ultimate you know right it's the ultimate catastrophe is the end of life and here i was seeing that the ultimate the worst possible thing you know in a sense of death the ending of a life was itself life it was the radiance like literally my mom's passing was the radiance and is this doesn't the, begin and it doesn't end right so it's exactly like the, this the, si it, it, it's thing. like seeing it's yeah. like i was seeing in the most beautiful way like the two sides of the the human frail vulnerable destructible creatures that we are and simultaneously the indestructible invulnerable presence of reality that everything is and this is always true that was a big moment in my life the passing of my mother of course 
But it's true, you know, when I get in the traffic jam and I'm pissed off and irritated, and it's true when I wake up and I feel like I have a fever, and it's true when I'm in a situation where uh, there's something that I really value and I may lose it and I have concerns about losing that and I feel all the emotions of that. All of that is the radiance simultaneously. It's not what I think it is. It's not merely what I think it is. It transcends that in the most profound way. And my mom's passing like, I mean, I literally felt like she became the teacher in that moment and her death became the teacher of like, mm -hmm. yes, John, this is true. And I ended up titling that chapter, this, um, this life that is also death, that, that death and life are the same thing, literally. Yeah. So my loss of something that I value, let's say, and the grief that might arise and has arisen, you know, in the face of that in my life mm. is life. It is the, it is the, the nourishing, um, this may sound weird, but overflowing benevolence of life, literally, even the most difficult shit. And and it's quite interesting because like that, you know, that capacity that comes with this to be with even most painful, you know, situations and emotions for you, it also actually gives you the capacity to be with other people's pain, mm -hmm. you know, in in a in a completely in a completely new way. I you know that is, that's been massive difference for me in comparison, mm -hmm. you know, to like before before and after um <laughs> like because I was feel that the kind of pictures that they do like before makeup after makeup before weight loss after or whatever um i don't know just randomly um came because i just find it so funny it's like before and after um, yeah it is funny while, while this is always here has always been here is that, here, that before that be be that before that's really ultimately impossible to really yeah. access because it's not here anymore but yeah, yeah, we can yeah, still talk yeah. about it yeah. yeah but you know what i mean it's like like yeah. that's why it sounds a bit funny you know to just say oh, sort of before or yeah. after you know but yeah i mean when and i and i shared this a few a few times by now so i don't want to go into like the whole story but you know there was there was a time after what I referred to like my first realization or first awakening doesn't matter mm -hmm. the the label which really just shifted everything for me mm -hmm. and um and because I went into this almost year or so of live really living from like this neutral place and I'm talking like I have not even though there were disturbing actually one of the toughest things that I experienced externally in my life happened that year mm -hmm. funnily enough and mm. yet, in terms of the way I experienced life, it was really like from a new, very, very neutral place. And I moved mm -hmm. through really challenging situations. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm still astounded, you know, when I sometimes think back to it when, when it comes up. And mm -hmm. But then gradually, after a year or so, you know, I started experiencing these like really disturbing, uh, powerful emotions that I... I didn't even like just pain. It was just like existential pain. I, you know, this is like the closest, uh, you know, if I were to like label it somehow, then that's what I would call it. That's what it felt like at the time. So I say existential because it didn't feel like, you know, I couldn't tell you, oh, this is why I'm feeling this way. Or I'm thinking about this and that's what's causing my pain. Or there was a particular situation. No, it was just literally mm. just, what was being experienced mm -hmm. and so a lot of now you know obviously I didn't know that then now looking back a lot of suffering came from partly that thought that 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 should not be happening to me because I thought that you know mm -hmm. and I was like really green when it comes to all mm -hmm. the awakening stuff you know I didn't mm -hmm. even use the term you know like I didn't know much about these things Mm -hmm. You know, but I assumed because I had this massive realization that shifted really everything, mm -hmm. you know, I, and then I lived from that place for a year or so. I really assumed that this is what, like, this is what was going to be like, you know, like I'm going to always just 
be like that. Never, you'll never um, struggle again. <laughs> maybe like never struggle again. So when that started, I was like, this should not be happening. And there was like, right. so that sort of opened up a whole other narrative about that, you know, that we're clearly, I did, you know, maybe that wasn't a realization. Maybe that's what I thought it was or like, you know, mm. and so on and so on. And of course, now I have better insight into why that actually was because, but mm. I don't want to go into it because that's not the topic. My point is that I really became like a robot, you know, because there was so much resistance to what mm. I was experiencing. Uh, the narratives plus ton of resistance. And I was like, oh, God, no, it's just a thought, just a thought. And this is what mm. people would call bypassing now. Like I was mm -hmm. just, but I wasn't aware that I was doing it. I, I wouldn't even mm. call it that way because I didn't know that term. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there was a whole lot of, resistance and that resistance was causing so much suffering mm. but what it also did is that whenever people i would see people suffering you know psychologically mm -hmm. as men of friends or family i really had no capacity job to be with their pain you know so i would literally I, I would be switched off i would be sort of either avoid it at all costs, avoid the conversations, you know, because mm -hmm. I had to, I felt like I had to protect myself, which is <laughs> massively important, you know? So mm -hmm. honestly, uh, for, for, for about a year of living this way, you know, I must have been a very unpleasant person to be around, like really, <laughs> because I mean, like to say the least, there's a massive difference, you know, the, at the moment that because there's no resistance to any painful emotion here, mm -hmm. there's no resistance to being with somebody else's painful emotion or experience. And that's been incredibly uh, impactful, you know, in terms of even without, you know, this whole thing about trying to then jump on, jump in and fix someone or mm -hmm. change or make them feel better so I mm -hmm. can be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of our willingness to help someone very often uh, comes from actually our, you know, <laughs> us trying to mm -hmm. fix someone or fix something for a person so that we can feel better so we don't have to deal with this painful situation. So, um, so what do yeah, you think? So the, what do you think the... Um, I have my own sense of it, but mm -hmm. I'm curious. What do you feel like avoidance uh, or resistance? Like, what what is where's that coming from? Like, where why is that even there? What do you think is the what do you oh. think is, in us as humans? Like that the resistance to experience, since it seems like, like you say, it's a we could say it's a big part of what certainly exacerbates pain or creates mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. I mean, John, you know me enough by now that I really don't have ultimate answers. <laughs> like of course really, not. Yeah, yeah. Well, like we we actually, can agree. We can agree to that that we have no right? ultimate answers. Yes. Yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> we don't have. I I certainly don't have ultimate answers. If I were to give to like give it a shot, you know, mm -hmm. in in to answer your question, I would say that. And again, I can only talk about it, mm -hmm. like in in how. I see it from what it's been like for me, my, you know, my, my, yeah. my direct experience that, um, so I'm not saying that this is how it is. I'm just saying this has yeah. been my experience, right? Yeah. Um, it's very important for me to make those distinctions because honestly, mm -hmm. our journeys are so unique. Uh, the way we experience things that I, I always think that it's important to remember that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. To me, it looks very clear that for as long as there is any sense of separate self, Mm -hmm. even most subtle you know that we're, that that we're somehow separate from mm -hmm. this right mm -hmm. yeah. for as long and 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 that can happen even after because there's i honestly believe that there are uh, you know uh, realizations away there can be multiple there can be deepening of it and so on sure. whatever we want to call it to to, to give you an example that 11 years ago, whatever that was, that was a massive realization that really was the end of victimhood, John. It was really, um, it was the way I, I looked at life and people was never the same. 
my experience, you know what I mean? It, it was just massive, massive shit. Mm-hmm. But there was still a sense of self. Mm-hmm. There was still a sense of separate self that mm-hmm. was resisting. So even though I understood that maybe we live in a distort created reality and that my I under, I knew directly that thoughts were not solid and mm-hmm. no solidity, right? So mm-hmm. to realize that I didn't have to treat my thoughts seriously, you know, that I didn't have to identify with mm-hmm. the, with them as this. Be- I mean, that was massive. That was like, you know, I, I, John, I felt like I, I, I lost, you know, 20 pounds. <laughs> like, like, the, like instantly. 20, 20 psychic pounds. <laughs> yeah, 20 psychic pounds, you know, like instantly gone, you know, because, oh, God, like really that whatever I was telling myself that is not necessarily true or like it's not you know what I mean like that was just huge 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 yeah so even though I now knew that Mm -hmm. there was still a sense of separate self yeah that was that even though understood how the reality sort of works but was still resisting that reality so Mm -hmm. if I knew that the reality was thought created for example it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. I still pref- didn't like the, the reality that it was creating. And so there was still resistance to it. So mm-hmm. for me, all of that was gone the moment the the sense of separate self dissolved. And that's where the resistance mm-hmm. went. The resistance went with it, so to speak. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, I, I think... I mean, it, it definitely it definitely kind of tracks like my what you're the way you're talking about it like connects with my own experience um because I was having this sense even before like as I was asking the question I was sort of mm-hmm. feeling my own answer to it in a sense my own understanding mm-hmm. of it um that I think I think the things that we humans have a tendency to like brace ourselves against or push away or resist or try to <laughs> micromanage our way out of it, you know, all the things that we do kind of like <laughs> strategizing to mm-hmm. try to get away from certain experiences is, well, it's rooted in, for me, it's rooted in, t- in my own experience in two things. One is it completely comes out of how I'm holding it, how I'm like that there even is a thing, of course, is the initial narrative that there's something yeah. actually there, yeah. right? Yeah. Include so that there's something there, let's say some subjective state or some circumstance. And then there's the one who's having that experience. So yeah. both of those in a sense are defined into existence. And and from the perspective of I'm an individual living in a world a world of circumstances and events and a world of inner experiences, those events and and experiences can sometimes feel as if they are in fact threats to me as the being that I am or the organism that I am or the personality that I am, or I would say even that the self that I am. Um, Certainly there's the, um, and so, well, let me just come back and say then that, so, yeah, so, so if, if, as an individual, I can feel as if some like state of mind is overwhelming potentially to the individual. And I then might want to brace myself against that or avoid that because I don't want to be threatened by that. I don't want to be overwhelmed by that. I don't want to be destroyed by that ultimately. Mm -hmm. And then why I think what you're describing, that sense of separation, why when that that dissolves more, um, and I, I, I think it's often in my experience can be like a, a kind of a, a watershed moment where there's that sense of seeing through the separation and the division. But at least in my life, it's been an ongoing process of continuing to see that. That's why I said, you know, our yeah. journeys are very different. It will yeah. be happening differently yeah. to different. Exactly. People. So, so I can still have experiences of feeling like something is, is overwhelming in some sense or too much. And I can even feel those currents of like, oh, you know, this is too much. And there can be some movement even of resistance, let's say. But at the same time, there, um, there's this other understanding, I would say. And the other understanding is that there's no division anywhere. There's no separation anywhere. And that the feeling of that is one of 
and you were describing this in your own way, the sense of that is one of there's not someone being threatened by something else potentially. And so there's no, so the the resistance or the defense against it or the pushing against it is just much less likely to be present when there's this other understanding that there's no threat here. Like you said, you know, that freedom from being a victim, the victim of our experiences and our circumstances, yeah. right? There's like, when there's nothing at the center of it, there's no one, there's no one. I wrote this many years ago that we're not the victims of life. We are life's expression. It's like completely flips the whole thing upside down. Yeah. So a moment that I might feel like, oh, intense fear or heartbreak or something that's occurring that I would think of as painful. From one vantage, it's like it's happening to me. From this other vantage, why uh, you were talking about like implications, the implications of the other vantage is that this entire thing that I'm experiencing, whatever it is, the difficulty, the challenge is, is literally just the flow of reality. It's literally just, it's not happening to someone. It's literally just life's flow, life's expression, life's emanation, life's um creativity life's radiance like literally it's literally that and that from that perspective it's like that's the perspective where resistance falls away from from that vantage because there's not someone there to resist something there's just this there's just life this is where yet again it comes down to our unique experiences because yeah um the way this sort of seemingly evolves, you know, it can be gradual, it can be all of the sudden, it can be also, and then even within the experience, there's so many subtleties. So, you know, again, to me, lack of resistance or there being no sense of separate self doesn't exclude uh, anything. So if overwhelm, if something is experienced as overwhelm, then it's experienced as overwhelm. But you know, yes. I think <laughs> I think the difference. I think the difference is what I'm trying to say is that when there is a sense of, you know, to to not have the sense of separate self also again does not mean putting up with certain things. It literally means the opposite. You actually have way more common sense. Do mm -hmm. you have capacity to deal yes. with anything? Mm -hmm. Way more than you probably ever had before because you have this completely right. different way of looking at things yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. why would you want to though no i i love right? i love how you, so, i love that you're saying that i think that's really critical why would, i love to go back to really common sense yeah. very simply yeah. and so what i'm what i'm trying to say is that i think and again i'm only this is why i'm a fan of just speaking from my direct experience because honestly i don't know how it is for other people and i also mm -hmm. don't know how it is generally i really don't so um mm. but i can I, I can i can definitely tell you what it like feels like to me but that's as far as i can go there's nothing and else so, to talk about but your experience in the yeah end. absolutely yeah absolutely i i really don't know anything else and even what and even my descriptions of what i'm experiencing are already sort of not that either because oh. In the moment that is experienced, it's just experiencing, you know, there, there are no assessments or interpretations happening in the moment when something is being experienced. So, but the, to go back to that question, because I think it is a very important question, you know, is that um, there's, there's, there is really big, when, when there's a sense of separate self with that mm -hmm. comes and need to resist something because that sense of self is under threat, exactly. even by things like a critical word or you know some, you know someone saying something exactly. critical yeah. or you know yeah. and so on and so on. So <clears throat> there's something is, seemingly there to defend and protect. Exactly. Yes, 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 yes. yes right. Yeah. But we're not talking about common sense situations where there is an actual threat and then common sense is that you're not going to stand there and defend it because you're so above it all you know you're just going to do something you know? or even in a human even in a less physically threatening situation somebody could be in a um i don't know have a relationship with someone and the person is just you know 
whatever they're they're verbally uh abusive or you just flat out just find like the the encounters you know not enjoyable you know at a certain point like you may have incredible bandwidth to be with anything and anyone absolutely but you may still decide <laughs> no uh, this is not this is not how I'm inclined to spend my time. You know, it's like I'm interested in being with different people, you know, and that's just, again, common sense. Or I would say also just being true to your own inclinations, your own preferences, your own like actually, sure, I could be with anyone. I could be married to anyone. I could have a relationship with anyone, for example, yes. from the standpoint of this bandwidth. But I may not be inclined that way because I I'm inclined in the ways that I am to to be with people that I don't have those kinds of experiences and actually, with. And actually, I find that there's honestly, when those narratives go, mm-hmm. when that sense of self sort of dissolves, mm-hmm. actually, there's so much more intelligence that yeah. sort of um, involved in how we just move through life, you know, and mm-hmm. that you know, I was laughing because. So someone, a friend of mine, sort of jokingly, you know, asked, her, "So how is, you know, how, so how do you function without the separate <laughs> self or whatever?" And I'm like, "Way better than with one." <laughs> like honestly, like if I have to be honest, way better than with one. There is so much intelligence, you know, that that comes with this, this idea that we need a sense of separate self in mm. order to function really wisely and intelligently is one of the, you know, that, that somehow it will make us, I don't know, couch potatoes or, you know, whatever is, is literally is the opposite of, mm-hmm. of, of what happens. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think there's way more, way more ease and way more intelligence as far as, you know, just um, moving, moving, you know, through life and dealing with situations. Absolutely. For me, I think a big part of that is that um, in terms of sort of navigating life, when 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 we're not merely holding it in these sort of more rigid kind of fixed ways of this is how it is, this is how it must be, that just opens up, <clears throat> it opens up wisdom, really opens up the wisdom of, Beautiful. Of of really being able to see this from the multitude of perspectives, from the countless ways it can be seen, and not just one way, and that just opens up a kind of flexibility and openness, a more lightness, more ease, more whether it's something we're dealing with on our own, whether it's an interpersonal situation. Um, I mean, I have found that to be one of the fruits of of discovering that this is inconceivable fundamentally, is that all of my conceptions like i still have them you know of course all of my ideas or i i they they're in play you know it's part of the human experience yeah but it's like they're just naturally going to be held that much more lightly and less dogmatically and rigidly and fixed and 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 less of a tendency to defend them as well um so there's just it's just openness really it's openness to hmm like Yeah. And that's, that's its own kind of freedom and its own kind of clarity and its own kind of, um, I think, skillfulness in a way of living life, really, because we're not locked into, we're less and less locked into this is the way it is, this is the way it must be, um, in order for me to be okay, (laughs) principally. Um, And when that, when that starts to loosen up, uh, it's, it's so freeing, it free frees us up to be, I think, more creative, more responsive. Um, and I think the best thing yeah. about this is that you don't need to be interested in awakening. You don't need to be seeking anything. You don't need to be on a spiritual journey to to really just open yourself up a bit more and just tr- at least try to give it a go and and see beyond what you think is true and just, you know, challenge yourself to actually question your own assumptions Absolutely. and your beliefs and everything. And honestly, I think that that in of itself can be so incredibly, uh, really life-changing, I would say, if, if, if you're willing to, to move beyond the, the sort of 
superficial the the condition that I used to think of myself this way I used to think of that person that way or life itself and so on and if you can move beyond that then honestly a, a whole a whole new world opens up <laughs> right absolutely absolutely because so many of the ways we're holding things I mean almost by definition the way we hold things conceptually limits mm. them in a sense it yeah. places a limit around that's what a definition does here's the limit of it whether it's a definition of me or you or yes. a relationship or I'm having with someone it's like and to realize more and more even in even if in a small way like you're saying mm -hmm. even if you just begin to get a little bit of a sense of wow it's more than the way you've been conceiving it even just a little taste of that can go an incredible way towards freeing people up in their lives I mean I've seen it beyond yeah. any conversations like you say of awakening or freedom absolutely spiritual anything it's it's a very human thing just realizing that our conceptions are limited that and that one thing has yeah. no end to the benefit of seeing that in my and opinion. those insights and those moments are honestly not to be underestimated to me i actually find i call them little awakenings i mean the, yeah. to, to me those moments are it doesn't matter where you're at what you know where you're interested in this stuff or not interested I mean those are such precious um yeah the 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 and, and this is why you know I'm I'm so I love well I've only read one of your books but I'm going to leave obviously the link to the rest of uh, your books for anyone who's interested but but also the work that you do with students young people who are suffering so much from anxiety and who have so many ideas about their lives and what they should be, how things should be, and so on. And to just to to just be there for them to open this whole other possibility of looking at things differently. I mean, I, I cannot even imagine how the, the impact, the amazing impact it must have, not only on their mental health, but also their life trajectories and how they're gonna start moving through life. So mm -hmm. um so thank you so much for your time of and, course um, it's always a joy and yes i hope that um if you haven't seen the previous conversation that you're going to watch it because this is where we talk a little bit more about exactly that mo moving beyond the sort of um mm. first impressions first descriptions and our kind of conditioned ways of looking and assessing things uh and so on so Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.